Matthew chapter number 28. If you turn there in Matthew 28, we just looked at that a little bit on Sunday. And uh, we'll look at it a little bit more again tonight. Matthew chapter 28, and then right after Matthew 28, the, the book that comes after Matthew is the book of Mark. Those are the first two books in the New Testament. Matthew and Mark will be in Matthew 28, first of all, and then in Mark chapter 16. I want to share a message with you tonight. Reviewing the Great Commission. We uh, touched on that quite a bit this past Sunday. And uh, I, I want to encourage you to listen. I know it's warm in here tonight. Hey, I'm going to preach fast and try to see if the Lord will let us get out of here a little bit early so we won't melt. Um, but uh, please, uh, please let God speak to your heart. Teenagers, it's so great to see you here tonight. And, and adults, I know you're tired. Man, I, I don't know what's going on with me. I, I think I know it's... I, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm walking on about three and a half hours sleep right now in the last 48 hours. It's like my brain is fried. You know what I think is going on? I think I'm getting excited about the Bible conference. Mm. And I think my mind's just spinning about the Bible conference. So if I start to doze off up here, y'all just say, Amen! All right? And, and wake me up. But um, I, I, I want to remind you what we heard from Dr. Canner at the beginning of the month in that revival service, the first Sunday night of the month. Dr. Canner made this statement, or he informed us that according to a recent survey, 51% of Christians, now let's stop right there for a moment. Mm. Hey, anybody here tonight a Christian? Amen. Amen. Is there anybody here tonight who would say, man, Lord, I'm just thankful that you saved my soul. Amen. 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 Hey, uh, according to this survey that Dr. Kanner uh, read recently, 51% of Christians don't know what the Great Commission is, and they can't find it in the Bible. So I want to talk to you about that for a few moments. <coughs> um, I'll tell you uh, what the Great Commission is. In fact, I think that's the next thing on our notes. If you, we mentioned this just Sunday, but if you didn't write it down this past Sunday, I hope you'll write it down right now. The Great Commission refers to the Great Command or the great duty, the great command or the great duty the Lord gives to his followers. And guess where we can find, guess where in the Bible we can find the great commission? Right. In fact, some of you, you might have it in your Bible. If, if it's not written in there, that's okay. But in this copy of the scriptures that I have, Right up here at the beginning of Matthew chapter 28, verse 16, it says, Jesus in Galilee, the Great Commission. In other words, the, uh, the editors of this uh, version of the Bible, or this copy of the Bible, is saying we're about to read the great command, or the, the great duty given to Jesus' followers. Now, y'all, we know that the Lord has done a lot for us, right? Yeah. Yeah. And when he, he communicates to us and He lets us know that there's something that He wants us to do for Him, shouldn't that get our attention? Yes. Yes. Okay? All right? And so the, the Great Commission refers to a, at a great or an important command or an important duty. And the Great Commission is found here in Matthew chapter 28... Verses 18 through 20. Teenagers, I want to encourage you to remember that. <coughs> Adults, I want to encourage you to remember that. And also, it's also considered to be found in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Christians ought to know Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, and Mark 16, verse 15. Now, now, check this out. I, I want to give you some, some main points to this little study tonight. Here's the first main point, okay? We just talked about Matthew 28 and Mark 16. Notice this, first of all. Number one, there are obviously many important verses in Scripture. In fact, really, they're all important, right? Yeah. But there are, are, are some that, you know, 
It's a great verse to know in, what is it, John eleven thirty five. Does anybody know what John eleven thirty five 35 says? Shortest verse in the New Testament. Really shortest verse in the Bible. That's right, Miss Lynn. Jesus wept. Now that's, that's a part of God, a part of the Word of God. But, you know, that, what we really want to emphasize is verses like Matthew 28, 18 through 20, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, uh, many other important verses of the Bible, like Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Um, you know, Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Is anybody listening to me out there tonight? Amen. Hey, Amen. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Romans 10, 13, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Um, oh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then, of course, there's the great John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hey, there are, are many wonderful truths and many wonderful verses in the Bible. And I want to encourage you to get to know as many as you can. Not just know about them, but memorize them. I want to give you a little clue on how to do that in just a moment. You don't have to turn there, but Psalm 119 verse 11 says this. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. There the psalmist seems to be implying memorization, doesn't it? Hey, y'all, watch this. Colossians 3.16 says this. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. We can look at verses after verses after verses that teach us we ought, we ought to pump the Bible into our minds and into our hearts. Amen. And there's a little tool that can help us do that. Now, now mark it down. In every church there's going to be, and I'm not trying to be unkind to anybody, but in every church, there's going to be folks who say, Oh, Pastor, I just, I just can't remember stuff anymore. Or I'm just too old. Well, that, maybe that's true. But please don't say that. Let's encourage one another to memorize God's Word. Amen. And here's just one little simple tip to do that. Y'all, one of your best friends in memorizing Scripture... going to be a simple little three by five card that's, right. that's going to be one of your best tools in memorizing the word of God now I've got a, a collection here of Bible verses that I've just you know added on to over the past couple of years or so of as I'm reading through the Bible it just kind of jumps out and, I, and, I'm, and I'm, maybe it's the spirit of God that just impresses upon me you need to know that verse you need to be familiar with it or maybe it's just a verse that really blesses my heart, or a verse that challenges me, or a verse that corrects me. So what helps is you take that verse and you write it down on, write the scripture on one side and write the address on the other. Like this one, this is only a part of our verse. I wrote on the one side, Mark 944C. I'll try to explain that some other time. But Mark 944C says this, And have peace one with another. Amen. When I read that verse recently, that challenged me. I need to have peace with those within my, my, my little world. Amen. None of this conflict or friction. That challenged me. So I said, I need to remember that verse. And, and what helps is if you write it down and then you just go over it and over it, sometimes you might just take one card and go over it every day for a week. Then once you feel like you have it down, it might take a week, it might take three days, it might take two months. But then you just maybe put it to the bottom of the stack and just go over that stack over and over again. 
even if you don't completely memorize it, what you're doing is you're developing a biblical mindset. So people of God, I believe the Lord wants you to hear this tonight. Invest in a little stack of three by five cards. And on one side of one of them, write down the words of Matthew 18 through 20. And on the other side, write down the address. In fact, if somebody you got your Bibles open there to Matthew 18, I'm sorry, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, would somebody read those verses out loud for some brave volunteer? All right, Wallace, please. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all teach things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Now that's a mouthful. Thank you, Wallace. And I don't know, some of you might be better at memorizing than others. Some of you might get that down in two days. Some of you, it might take two months. But I want to encourage you to, to write Matthew 28, 18 through 20, the words on one side and the address on the other, and just go over it and over it and over it. And if you need to go through it over it every day or go through it once a week, but just fill your mind and your heart with that scripture. Do the same for Mark 16, 15. Somebody like to read for us out loud? Somebody else, Mark 16, 15, please. All right, Miss uh, Jesse, please. He said to them, "Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation." Okay. Those verses are considered to be the Great Commission, and so many Christians. Hey, if, if Doctor Kanner is correct, and I have no reason to doubt him, if he's correct, over half of the Christians don't know what the Great Commission is, you should by now, you should know it's the Great Command, it's the great duty He's given us, the great obligation, and you should know now where it's found. Amen. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, and Mark 16, 15. In both of those scriptures, are you all with me out there tonight? Amen. Amen. In both of those scriptures, Jesus is talking. Notice this now. I want you to... Uh, uh, this is the, the second main point. There's, I, I was tired when I put all this together, so there's a lot of little parts to this <laughs> second main point, okay? I want you to notice with me in both verses, <coughs> excuse me, in both addresses, who was doing the talking? It was the Lord Jesus. Yes. <coughs> hey, when he talks, isn't he worth listening to? Amen. <laughs> I, had the, uh, I had the opportunity last night, and, it, and it might, it's so funny. My, main, my brain is like in a fog right now. It seems like it was three nights ago, but it was only the last night. I had the opportunity for about two, two or three hours last night to participate in what was called night fire training with some of our, our deputies in Brantley County. And um, we were told to meet at this one location in this firing range at 6.30, and there was about a total of, I'm, I think there was about 13 or 14 of us out there, and we were told to bring our own weapons, but don't bring any ammunition. And they didn't want anybody coming onto the firing range with a loaded weapon. What were they trying to avoid, y'all? An accident, somebody getting shot accidentally. Right. And um, so when we got there, uh, uh, the the range master, the man in charge, the range commander, the range, range master, he had everybody sit down. And 6.30, it's still kind of daylight there, but for about the first 30 minutes or so, he just went through all the, the safety protocols. Keep your weapon pointed down range. Don't point the pistol or the rifle at somebody else. Keep it pointed down right. Yeah. About 30 minutes of just safety rules that everybody had already heard a dozen times before, but you can never hear them too often. That's right. And then um, 
after about 30 minutes or so of doing all that, then he took about another 10 or 15 minutes and went through the plan for the night. He said, the first thing we're going to do, he said, we're going we're to divide you up into teams of four, and every, every shooter is going to have an, a, a safety officer following right behind him, so there's going to be four men lined up on the range, and behind those four shooters, there's going to be four safety officers, and it's the job of those safety officers to make sure that you're keeping your gun pointed downrange, not anybody else. And um, so he, he assigned the teams, and then he, he told us, he said, the, the first uh, set, what we're going to do is you're going to just shoot with your pistol. And then the second, which would be the last set of the uh, a shooting program, he said, you're going to shoot some with your pistol and some with your rifle. And so he went, he went through all of the safety plans and he went through all of the, 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 the program for that night. Then he said, now I want you to load the magazines of your pistols and your rifles, but don't insert them into the weapon. So we all loaded the magazines up. And uh, oh, Pastor Steve was called up to be on the first team to do the shooting. <laughs> Amen. And so me and these four other men, I'm sorry, three other men, we went up to the line, first of all, to do the shooting. And to my left was a deputy who's like Mr. Marksman. The man scored a perfect score last night, a 300. Bubba Mercier. Okay, or a turkey. <laughs> Didn't miss a shot. Okay, I told him when it was all over. I said, "Man, I don't ever want to get in a gunfight with you." Uh, but uh, he's kind of a, a senior-ranking deputy in, in in his agency. And then, uh, so he was number one. I was number two. And then, right over here, uh, was a sergeant from our sheriff's office, and one of the longest-serving deputies in Brantley County. You know, and a ranking deputy, a sergeant. And then on the other side of him is the sheriff. <laughs> okay, so I've got a, a marksman to my left and a sergeant and the sheriff to my right. But you know what? None of us, even these guys, with this guy over here with all this shooting experience and this sergeant standing right next to me with all the almost 30 years of law enforcement ex experience, a ranking deputy, and then the sheriff of the county, Lynn Davis, down on the other end. None of us moved a muscle until the range master told us to do so. Amen. He would say, shooters, take your marks. And he would tell us exactly where, he said, I want you at the, at the three yard line. Then he'd say, I want you at the seven yard line or the 15 yard line. He would tell us where to stand. And then he would, when he'd tell us to stand in, he says, go ahead and go hot with your weapons. That means you put the clip in the pistol and you rack it. And a, a bullet goes into the chamber. That means it's hot. It's ready to shoot. But even at that point, even though that man down there was the sheriff, and here's a sergeant and this great shooter over here to my left, nobody did anything until that range master said, shooters, and he would tell us, this is how many bullets I want you to fire. This is where I want you to fire from. This is what I want you to do when you get done firing. It was just all orchestrated. And y'all, that's, that kept everybody safe last night. All right? And that gave us some good training. But we've got a, a range master as Christians, don't we? That's right. And he says, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go into all the world and share the gospel. That's our Lord Jesus. He's our range master. And who did he say it to? Jesus wasn't talking to the angels. He wasn't talking to the lost crowd. He was talking to his followers. Amen. Amen. This is what I want you to do. I want you to know when did he say it? He said it at the end of his ministry here on earth. Mm -hmm. Jesus' last command was the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. The last thing he told us to do, he said, I want you to go out there and I want you to share the gospel. 
His last command should be our first concern. And he did all that because he wants other people to get <coughs> saved and he wants to use you to be a part of it. Amen. Isn't that great? Amen. Amen. Hey, this, these pictures of, of the house where I got saved and of me as a five-year-old boy, somebody played a role in my salvation. Amen. Now, it was my brothers and my dad and my mom, but I look out here tonight and some of you have gotten saved here at Lulatin Baptist Church. Somebody had a role in your salvation. Key points to remember, and we'll finish this up. Y'all, when we're talking about memorizing Scripture, we just, it's not that we just want to know the Bible. Our ultimate goal is we want to know the God of the Bible. Amen. Amen. We want to know how He thinks. We want to know what He's like. We want to know who He is. Listen to this. Oh. I want to encourage you as you study your Bible and as you seek to memorize God's words, pray for the right, pray for right motivations. We don't want to read the Bible just because preacher said so. We don't want to read the Bible just because you might feel guilty if you don't. We want to serve the Lord for the right motivations. Let me, Christian, let me encourage you. Let this be your prayer. God, would you give me the right motivations for serving you? Give me the right motivations for serving you. I want to remind you about this. When Jesus said, um, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. I want to remind you the same Jesus who said that in Matthew 28 verses 18 through 20 and Mark 16, 15. That same Jesus. And watch this young people. If you're saved, he lives inside of you now. Amen. And that's still his heart to want to see other people get saved, for, for them to hear the truth, for them to believe. Amen. Then one last set of scriptures I'm going to ask you to look with me for just, just briefly. In both of these sections, in both in Matthew 28 and in Mark 16, you'll find the word go. Jesus says, I want you to Go and communicate. I want you to go and tell. I want you to go and preach. I want you to go and teach. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Watch this. Look at Matthew 11. Matthew 11, please. Matthew 11 and verse number 28. Somebody maybe who hasn't read yet, who would be willing to read for us Matthew eleven twenty eight? 28, just the first three words. This is Jesus talking. All right, um, Miss Sarah, if you'd read those three words, please. Sorry, you said Matthew. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come unto me. All right, here's what I want you to notice. It's true that in Matthew 28, Jesus said, I want you to go. But long before Jesus said go, he first said, I want you to come. Amen. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But before he said that in Mark 16, bear with me, I'm almost done. I know we'll get out of here. Look, at, with, look with me in Mark chapter 3, please. Mark chapter 3 and verse number 13. Somebody else, maybe who hasn't read yet, who read this last verse for us. Some brave volunteer, maybe a teenager. Somebody else maybe who hasn't read. All right, Miss Elisa, you want to read that for us, please? Yeah, but you said... Uh, Mark 3, 13. Okay. And he goeth up uh, into a mountain and calleth unto him who he would, and they came unto him. I want you to see this. It's true in Mark 16, Jesus is saying, Hey, guys, I want you to go. But long before he said go in Mark 16... First in Mark chapter 3, he says, I want you, I'm calling you to me. Hmm. Make sure you spend time with the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Make sure you get close to Him. Make sure you develop a relationship with Him, that you are rightly related to Him. It's not just that we want to know the Bible for the sake of head knowledge, but we want to have a relationship with our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
It's one thing to know what Psalm 23 says, and you know, the Lord is my shepherd, but it's another thing to know the shepherd of Psalm 23. Amen. Our prayer for one another should be, oh God, give us a heart to know you. Our prayer for our children and our grandchildren should be, oh God, give us a heart to be rightly related with Jesus Christ. Give us a heart that will look at Him as precious. Give us a heart that has confidence in Him. And watch this, y'all. Hear this, hear this carefully, please. So many Christians, they, they miss this somewhere. Young people, I hope you'll listen to this. Moms and grandparents, listen to this. Yes, we, we need to know what the word Great Commission means. It's the Great Commandment, the Great Duty. We need to know where it's found. It's found in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. It's found in Mark 16, 15. Jesus says, I want you to go and I want you to communicate, I want you to teach, and I want you to proclaim the gospel. Amen. Just remember what the gospel is. Hmm. That's really confused with a lot of people right now. Hmm. The word gospel means what, y'all? Good, good news. Good news. What is the good news? Three parts to the good news. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose the third day. That's the gospel. Jesus says, I want you to go and share that with what you heard Miss Jessie read a little while ago, with all creation and with every creature. You know why that's so important that they hear the gospel? Because the Bible tells us in other places, like in Romans 1.16, the Bible tells us a person cannot be saved unless they believe the gospel. Amen. Amen. And the gospel is that Christ died for our sins, He was buried and rose again. Lord willing, if... Jesus tarries and he lets us stay here on earth uh, all the way until Sunday morning when Elisa gets baptized. I almost said when Elisa gets married. When Elisa <laughs> gets baptized up there in that, that baptistry and she's standing up there in that water, then the pastor puts her under the water and brings her back up. That, that's all a God thing. It's not like the Baptist came up with that process. It's not like Pastor Steve invented that idea. No, that baptism comes from the Bible, and that's how God pictures the gospel. When she's standing up in the water, that lets us know she believes that Jesus hung up on the cross for her. And when the preacher buries her under the water, that lets us know she believes that Jesus died and was buried. But man, Pastor Steve's not going to hold you down there. We're going to bring you up three days later. No, not now. <laughs> I'm going to bring you right back up. That, that, that pictures the fact that she believes that he rose from the dead. Amen. And see, that's all the gospel. Amen. That's why the baptism is such a beautiful thing, because it pictures the gospel. And what's so big about the gospel? That's what Jesus wants us to communicate to every creature. And that's what is must be believed in order to be saved. Amen. It's the gospel. Amen. Know your Bible. Know the Great Commission. Know where it's found. Know what the gospel is. Know what the word gospel means. What does the word gospel mean? Good, Good news. news. Good news. And share it. You can use your Bible to share the gospel. You can use one of these tracks. We had them you know, stacked on the back row this past Sunday morning. Now they're on that back table. Share it with somebody. Aren't you glad somebody shared it with you? Amen. Amen. If you'll bow your heads with me, please. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, thank you for being so patient. I know it's been a warm night. One of those deputies last night Excuse my language, I'm just going to kind of phrase a little bit of what he said. I'll share this with you while you're just listening, if you would please, with your heads bowed and your eyes closing. Talking about how warm it is in here tonight. It was pretty hot last night, outside, 10 o'clock at night, shooting all those bullets. 
and one deputy said, man, it's hotter than H-E-L-L -L out there tonight. And I looked at him and I said, well, it's not that hot. Mm. <laughs> and the other guys kind of laughed. And the deputy said, oh, oh, sorry, chaplain. But you know what? It's, we don't want our loved ones to die and go to hell. That's right. We don't want you to die and go to hell. Amen. Have you believed the gospel? Have you recognized that believing the gospel about the Lord Jesus Christ and believing on him is the way <coughs> to be saved from your sin and from hell? If you would say, Pastor Steve, you know, I, I think I may have misunderstood in the past. I may not have realized it. I may not even known about it. But, Pastor, I, I, I understand tonight that in order to be saved the Bible way, it, it, I must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done for me, that he died on the cross for my sins. He was buried, Rosie. It's just that simple. I can tell you that. It's, it's so simple. A five-year-old little boy named Steve Beal in South Florida could understand it. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, anyone here tonight can say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I don't think I'd ever been saved the Bible way, but I'd like to be. Anyone raise their hand? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good. Anyone else? I'm going to pray with you in just a moment. In fact, um, uh, um, after I pray, I'm, I'm, we're just going to remain seated for a moment. And if you would like to be saved the Bible way, hear me out. The Bible says God wants you to do it now. The reason why he wants you to do it now is because he doesn't promise you tomorrow. And if you die without believing the gospel, if you die without salvation, you'll go to a place where it really is hotter than South Georgia. There's no relief. I'm going to encourage you in just a moment to come and say yes to Jesus. Christians, I'm going to ask you to be praying. There's, there's adults who raised their hand just a moment ago. So Christians, I need you to be praying. I'm going to ask Miss Melanie to turn off the camera. <clears throat> Let me have a